What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with the Black Order team review. Now, Black Order is not fully farmable yet. We're just waiting on Co Obsidian. That said, we're pretty sure we know where he's going to go. We're pretty sure we know how to get everybody else. And let's be fair. Fear? Fair and clear? Fleer. Let's be Fleer here. <sighs> They're an endgame team. Try as you might, you're going to have to spend a ton of money to get that full team early. Like, we'll, we'll talk about it in availability. First, let's take a quick look at the team in a blitz fight, and we'll talk about their availability. Yeah, this will go. So the Black Order is a five character team, four Black Order tagged characters, and Thanos. Uh, of those characters, Ebony Maw is the legendary of the team, which requires you to have a, a full set of Inhumans Guaranteed one of them has to be Black Bolt, and then five other Inhuman characters. Your choice at five star to unlock. Um, Thanos and Proxima Midnight are both node farmable characters. Unfortunately, they are level 70 or 75 node farmable characters in that uh, Proxima is Doom Campaign 2-9, where you have to be at least level 70, uh, 71. And Thanos is Nexus 8-9, again, an endgame node. So you're not going to be getting... Uh, reliable farms on those characters in the first six months of the game in general. Um, Corvus Glaive is in the arena store. Again, great, super easy to farm him. Very unlikely you're going to be uh, getting him uh, and the rest of the characters early enough that it makes a difference, so he's there. You'll get him whenever. And then the only person we don't have a location for is Cole Obsidian. Uh, Cole Obsidian Honestly, he can go anywhere. He can go to the war store. He can go to the blitz store. He can go to the raid store. We're pretty confident he's going to a store, uh, not another node. You know, two characters are already on nodes anyway. But that said, again, it doesn't matter how easy or hard it is to get Cole Obsidian shards because the other characters are endgame farms only. So you're going to have to figure that out as you go. Uh, but that's it for availability let's take a quick look at the team and determine their usability and it's quite a bit so here they are the black order where are they useful everywhere <laughs> everywhere they are probably the best single team in the game right now um, they're the best team from the second you unlock them to end game uh, in pretty much every possible game mode uh, when it comes to arena they are the best offense and probably the best mindless defense team you can place uh, and by mindless i mean if you just put them up you'll be fine like you don't have to think about how many red stars do they have or or oh is it better than using this particular like the black order is kind of a self-contained win all button so you can put them on arena defense, and then the stronger they are, the better they are. You know, it takes a stronger Black Order to beat them, that kind of thing. Same thing kind of goes on offense. Um, they can just pretty much beat anybody, uh, regardless of if it's a Black Order or just strong characters, uh, because of how they're designed to function. Um, that's arena. Raids, they are a totally viable raid team. There is a small issue. Maw doesn't heal enough and often enough to give them a, a lot of sustainability, but with ISO 8s, you can give someone like Thanos or Cole Obsidian uh, the extra healer stat, and that should be able to kind of keep them alive through raids. They are relatively reasonable at any raid node, but, you know, the, obviously the stronger they need to be for higher U7s, the better off you'll be, but there's really no regret and in investment in them. Uh, moving to, and specialty raids are kind of weird because they are cosmic, but there's a mix of bio, skill, mystic uh, in the team, so it's very hard to find one node for some raids, but they'll be okay otherwise. Uh, War, literally guaranteed offensive victory team. Uh, as far as defense goes, kind of the same as any other strong team on defense. They're going to require a specific response, and the stronger they are, the more specific that response needs to be. I, I don't put mine on defense because my 400k Black Order can beat pretty much any team that's not 700k. Um, so I don't really worry about it. But, you know, some people like to put their Black Order on defense because 
people haven't quite figured out how to beat them yet. If you haven't figured out how to beat them yet, uh, I mean, they've been out for almost half a year now. You should. They're not hard to beat. They're incredibly easy to beat. They're incredibly easy to beat on war defense regardless of their power, but that's a different video for another time. Um, Blitz doesn't count really as anything. Uh, as far as game modes are concerned, uh, outside of that, they're not great at uh, at PvP as a team, but individual characters like Maw and, and Thanos could be. Proxima Midnight uh, is very good. You'll see some people tell anecdotal stories of using them in Dark Dimension. Uh, as a rule, if you're using this team in Dark Dimension 2 to beat Dark Dimension 2 for the first time, why, how, and if you were willing to spend enough, enough money to make this team viable at that level... Um, you probably could have spent money to, you know, have a easier time of Dark Dimension 2 anyway. Like, the amount of money it costs to get this team at gear tier 13 by the time you're level 70, we, we are talking about, you know, four figures. So, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. As for DD3, no... Uh, Proxima and Ebony Maw are great. Thanos, not really. Cole, not really. Corvus Glaive, not really. Remember, Dark Dimension is really about sustainability and control. This team has neither of those things. Uh, but Proxima does give you a little bit of control, and Ebony Maw does do percentage health damage. So I don't really see anything changing there. You know, I might see somebody with a five or 600k version of that team uh, say they, they were able to do it. And congratulations, your medal will come in the mail. But for the rest of the, um, you know, sane players of the game, we'll, we'll stick with good characters that have proven themselves, not just proving a point by how good this team can be. But outside of that, overall, probably one of the most useful teams in the game, and that's unlikely to change as far as teams go. Uh, they are obviously more useful than the Symbiotes um, overall, but the Symbiotes do come up with a little bit more value in the places where they shine, which is Raiden. Uh, in Dark Dimension, clearly. So, taking a quick look uh, at their breakpoints, we'll start with Cole City and we'll look at the level of investment. Uh, just to let you know, what I have here for um, uh, ISOs is what I would recommend. Striker from left to right, stri uh, you know, multiple strikers, uh, and then two skirmishers. There is no correct answer to the Black Order. Um... You just kind of lean into what they do. Some people put healer on Thanos for raids because he's tanky and you don't use the full Black Order. Um, some people like just pure, regular damage on Corvus Glaive and Proxima. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, they all do very well. You could switch anything around. Maw could be a healer. I don't like him as a healer, but he could be. Uh, but overall... This is what I would recommend, so we're just not going to talk anymore about that. Starting with Cull Obsidian, uh, Tier 4s, right? Payback. 50% uh, damage on his counterattack at, at Tier 4, 10% uh, max health, and Black Order and Thanos gets 10% max health. That's the reason why this Tier 4 matters. Outside of that, you know, he does his own little thing. He, he makes sure Thanos can be strong. He, uh, him and Thanos get defense up. When enemy attacks Thanos or Ebony Maw, 250% damage counterattack. Obviously, the higher his damage, the better he is. Um, so that's great. And when this character drops below 5%, 50% or 25%, gain one death proof up to a max of 5. So the only thing that major on tier 4 on this is the health boost to the entire Black Order, which I think is relevant, and the 50% on the damage. This is a tier 4 again. For this team, we're not looking at how good a character is outside of this team. We're just talking specifically about on the Black Order, and this is kind of necessary. Every other tier 4 on the Black Order is Vanity, I think is the best way to say it. Uh, this increases his ultimate attack uh, by a ton, so it is a big damage increase uh, when you tier 4 it. But that depends on your team. Does, you know, does, yours, does your call need to uh, do this much damage when he ults somebody? That depends on what you're fighting up. It's a good tier 4. It's a really big chunk of damage, especially if it's, you know, if he is tanking the way he's supposed to and he has a decent chunk of death proofs on him. You can do probably like six or seven hundred percent damage total with this attack uh, on average. But 
don't know. He's usually not the guy who's killing stuff. It's his counterattack for me that works, so I, di I didn't need it. Uh, Obsidian Guard. I don't really justify the extra 10% healing on this ability. Uh, it's unlikely that by the time it comes around the second time he uses it, he's going to need a heal at all. You've either won the fight or not. And he's definitely not going to need an extra 10% healing the first time he uses it, which is immediately. So, not a huge necessary tier 4 upgrade. Uh, Devastating Cleave. Small increase in damage on tier 4. Mm, nothing crazy. Nothing really worth talking about here. Next, we'll go to Corvus Glaive. Corvus Glaive and Proxim are pretty much the exact same. We'll start with Loyal Lieutenant. Uh, all the Black Order passives are stat buffs to the Black Order. So, first is he gets offense up and Thanos will get offense up and the Mind Stone. No big deal. When an enemy or this character drops below 50% health, he gains stealth. So, he's just constantly in stealth. While in stealth, uh, the tier 4 gives him an extra 20% crit chance and 10% crit damage. Oh, no. Just chance. I apologize. Reading it wrong. So, just an extra 20% crit chance, which is huge. Um, because he crits a lot. But he's not in stealth all the time, just often. And that's pretty good. Uh, the last upgrade gives him 10% damage and all Black Order Thanos allies 10% damage. This is probably the most important tier 4 on the team. Seriously, the most important tier 4 on the team. Because that's literally a 50% damage increase to the entire team, you know. That's 10% on each character. Uh, it's huge. It's a big deal. Um, and then some characters, like Maw, who cares that he gets more damage, but Thanos... Proxima, literally everybody else on the team, huge boost on that 10% damage. Um, and the crit chance, like I said, it's kind of cool, which is why some people will be like, you understand, Tony, he has crit chance, you want to put Raider on him. Yeah, but, like, he he doesn't, he, crit is not, like, he, he doesn't care. He, it's not about the damage, it's about the fact that when he attacks on basic, so does Proxima, and they remove buffs, and then you can get multiple attacks, and you can start absolutely shredding but i don't want to go into detail on it when it talks to iso 8s i've already made my piece on that you could totally put anything on any of these characters for my money raider just isn't worth it because just because it says crit doesn't mean he's a crit character it just means sometimes he does more damage you don't need to lean into that crit tends to be better on characters that hit multiple people or multiple times this he doesn't do that that often um grim glaive his ultimate Attack primary target for damage. It is piercing, which is nice. During stealth, this ability deals double damage against the primary target if they have defense up. Attack all adjacent targets for 200%. Uh, the damage increase for tier 4 is nothing. 40% to piercing and uh, and everybody else. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's basically 50% as if they didn't. You know, like, it's not enough to make too much of a difference. That said, in... Raids, it's huge because there tends to be more than two characters adjacent. You know, you might have a full six-pack of characters together or something like that. So if you're hitting more people, this number really does matter. But in general, where you're using this team, it's usually you're only going to hit two extra people max. So not really worth the investment, but okay. Blood waiting. Attack the most injured enemy for 360. It goes to 400, ignoring taunt and stealth. Again, small increase. Good news is it's all piercing. The bad news is who cares? Small increase in damage. This is kind of the, the whole show for him. Tech primary target for 180% piercing, plus clear two positive effects. Gain an assist from ally Proxima. Now, this is what you get uh, for tier 4 -ing. I think it's like an 80% chance or 50% chance to gain an assist from her before this. The guaranteed assist is huge. Uh, this attack cannot be blocked. If Proxima Midnight is an ally, this attack cannot be dodged. And... If either or both of them have Striker, whenever they do it, they get the extra bonus attack and blah, 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 extra damage all the time. Clearing two positive effects. Big deal. Works really well. Uh, as for Proxima Midnight, kind of the same thing. I'll start from this. More damage, but it's not piercing. Clear two positive effects. Can't be blocked. Can't be dodged. Blah, blah, blah. You see how this works. We don't got to go in. We'll start here. Star throw. Attack primary target for 200% damage. Goes to 250 Apply offense down for two turns. Not bad. Chain to three targets within two spaces. Basically, it just always chains because it counts as a throne. I don't know if you guys know the difference between a throne chain and a melee chain. A throne chain can jump. So, a throne chain doesn't... If someone's stealth, 
a throne chain won't stop. It'll go, oh, never mind, I'll go to this guy, where a melee chain will stop when it sees stealth. This is technically a throne chain, so it will ignore a stealth character and hit pretty much anybody around. It basically wants to continue if it can. So it's a pretty decent attack. Uh, dodge breaks this chain, unfortunate, but true. That's true of all throne chains, for the record. Uh, and for more information, check Daredevil's baton throw. Works the exact same way, except no offense downs. Um, you get slightly more offense down from this, which could be relevant. Um, not for me. I don't think the second turn of offense down matters, usually because it winds up with Thanos debuffing everybody with a flip. So, But, you know, if you just like to see big Yu-Gi-Oh numbers, you're more than welcome to check it out. Uh, Last Light, her best ability, still doesn't need tier 4s, but really helpful. Attack primary target for decent damage. Reduce speed bar by 25%. Apply stun and slow. Attack cannot be blocked. This is insane. This is unblockable stun and slow that reduces the speed bar. Like, think of Miles as special and now add to it. This is a great ability. Um, it goes to 50% speed bar reduction and a little bit more damage. So this is an absolutely wonderful tier 4 investment. Um, especially if you're looking at PvP or using her in Dark Dimension 3. Uh, this really starts making a difference, but for the entire team, duh, it's up to you. Depends on how many tier 4s you have, that kind of thing. Uh, Embrace the Void, another kind of mandatory one. Uh, focus up for her and the entire team. It goes up by 10% with the tier 4. It doesn't seem like much, but it's a huge deal. Speed up for her and Thanos. On turn, clear stealth from the most injured enemy. Uh, that is the tier 4 value pick. Uh, the Guaranteed clear stealth from the most injured enemy versus the sometimes, like, you know, 50% of the chance. That's a big deal. Um, it can be resisted, but focus, so it won't be resisted kind of thing. So you should be okay. Plus, she has pretty decent stock focus. Not great, but pretty decent. She should be okay. Uh, next, we have Thanos. Thanos, uh, I'm not going to go over Thanos's OG kit. Because you don't really see it on the Black Order team. Instead, I am going to look at Thanos' Empowered Kit. There's a little bit of overlap. And truly, there is no bad investment here. You can put them all up. But it really depends on your Thanos and how often you use the Black Order. First is... If this character's health is full at the start of the match. He, you know... Or a Black Order ally drops to 50%. Fill speed bar by 50. And apply regeneration. Cool. 100 extra generation, all damage and armor to all enemies by 10%. So you know how Emma is minus 10% speed? He's that for damage and armor. That's that's the reason why this team is so good. People really don't pay attention too much to that one line of text. They take a little bit more damage, but they do a little bit less damage. And that's one of the reasons why people underestimate what it takes to beat them. Because... A parity fight into the Black Order is still actually like a 10% punch up, just because of how the numbers work. So as for tier 4s are concerned, the biggest thing it does is increase the speed bar for him and lower an extra um, armor stat. The armor is kind of not necessary, the fill the speed bar is a little bit necessary, so Every time Thanos takes a turn, it works out better for everybody. So this is a good tier 4. More importantly, you probably had this tier 4 from Thanos the previous pass. So it's not like you wasted it. You know what I'm saying? Celestial Barrage. Uh, this is his big attack that is absolutely positively worth doing as soon as you can. Attack all targets for 200% piercing and 100% drain. Repeat this attack two or three times. So basically, this is going to full heal Thanos almost every time, whatever he was at. Reduce speed bar of all enemies by 20%. This attack cannot miss. So it's 600% true damage. 300% drain. You know? Um, and it's got one of the coolest animations in the world if you uh, actually manage to kill somebody. The tier 4 upgrade brings it up by 50%. But remember, it's not 50%. It's 150% because this attack happens a total of 3 times. Uh, guaranteed, where previously it's one or two extra times. So, you're basically, this one investment is not just a 50% damage increase, it is a guaranteed 150% damage increase, which is huge uh, to both them and all the other targets. 
Uh, and it also increases the drain, which didn't really matter, but it's nice too. So this is definitely one of the more important ones. Uh, time shift. This is where things get weird. So it flips all negative effects to positive effects for allies. Flip three positive effects to negative effects for enemies. Apply taunt to Cole Obsidian. This attack is unavoidable. Now, with tier fours, you flip all positive effects to negative effects. I'm not going to lie. In all of the game modes that I use the Black Order, they don't have more than four positive effects on them by the time I get to do this because that's how fast this team is. The only time I ever wish that I did have uh, this tier four, only time ever, is on the very few situations where it's not right for me to flip on turn one, like Black Order versus Black Order. Uh, I don't use the Black Order to beat the Black Order. Uh, I use real characters, you know, and that seems to work just fine for me. But your results may vary. You know, your mileage may vary. So if you are trying to be the Black Order, Black Order, this is one of those abilities that you really want to make sure you stick uh, because you want to go after Thanos does it and you want to make sure all of those buffs that they just turned uh, become, you know, debuffs. Uh, outside of that, I don't see many other uses for it, but that could be just enough for you. So this is a good tier four in the mirror match. Uh, and then Infinity Blast. Honestly, I know I usually say damage is damage, but you use this attack so many times that like that extra 60%, the counter doesn't matter, but the extra 60% damage to three targets or, you know, 180% total damage output kind of matters. Uh, this is a pretty worthwhile investment. Um, probably not the first thing you upgrade, but definitely as you've brought your your team up, maybe they're 250 to 300k, that's when you could start looking at how do I increase the damage output, and since Thanos basically never dies, and he's usually the last guy left alive anyway, this is a pretty decent upgrade, I would say, uh, look into it. One of the higher important vanity ones, after you've gotten all of the necessary ones we're talking about out of the way. You know, with all the passives, and then the Proxima Corvus Basics. That's where this one comes in. Uh, that's pretty much it for Thanos, so we can go back out of Empowered Thanos. No need to look at the base kit, because you rarely see it, and that's... If you do use them in U7 with, like, Maw, really all that matters is Titan Eternal. None of these other ones really make a difference. Then we have Maw, right? We're going to close out on Maw. Uh, Envoy of Thanos. This one, surprisingly, um, I don't actually respect Resistance. <laughs> uh, at least from the like perspective of me being a player if I was using this team on war defense I'd probably care a little bit more about this tier 4 but considering the fact that the only thing this tier 4 does compared to every other character is just resistance to him in the black order team I, I it's not worth it if it like you know, every sometime like Cole has a more uh, likely chance of going into uh, you know counters, uh, and uh, Proxima is damaged plus um, clearing stealth and Corvus. I don't even remember what Corvus does. You know, like who cares? This is just resistance. Now, one thing that I like to say is there's a difference between um, being right and and proving you're right. You know, some people will say, well, more resistance means that my characters are going to resist more frequently. No, it doesn't mean that. It means your characters can resist more frequently. Can you track? Are you keeping track of the metrics? Are you determining how many times your characters resisted something? And more importantly, did you keep track of all the times they failed to resist that same thing in that exact same You don't know. You don't know. Damage is is a is a metric by which you can track right damage you could say i'm hurting him more and it, it's it's reasonable to some extent focus is also trackable because you're saying hey i'm using an ability and it's succeeding more than it was before resistance is hard to track because you can't really tell how many times you would or would not have done something or it would have happened because you just don't know. You know that people with high resistance on the other side, but we're all under the impression that there's some shaky math, you know, the Spider-Man dodge math 
going on on the AI, so that doesn't really apply. When you have control of a character, or when you're using the team, does resistance make too much of a difference? And for my money, I've never been able to prove that it has or hasn't, so I don't think this tier 4 is worth it. Then we have Force Transfusion, which is absolutely worth it. Uh, it per Black Order and Thanos Ally, fill speed bar by 5% for self and enemies, and reduce speed bar for all enemies by 5%. So on the full Black Order team, this is a 25% uh, or 50% speed bar swing. They lose 25, you gain 25. Um, it Nothing else changes here, but that speed is huge when you're doing not only the mirror match, but PvP or arena stuff. Uh, steal 3% health from all enemies, repeat this attack 4 times, so it's still 15% just divided. Uh, apply slow to all enemies for 2 turns. Fill speed bar for self and all allies by 5%. Yeah, we did this already. Each character, each attack redistributes a maximum 25% of this character's max health. The math on this is stupid. We've done it. Don't even bother. It does... Just, just treat it like it a Minerva or a Phoenix... And don't really treat it as a heal, because it's not a great heal, but it's okay. Uh, and it's worth it for the turn meter manipulation at tier 4. Insidious Whisper, um, the two turns of defense up, this is a concession uh, that you get for tier 4 upgrade. I don't think it's necessary unless you're using this team uh, for U7. I don't think it matters too much for uh, raids or arena. Uh, this team... But this is more of an upgrade that you definitely use when you're using Maw outside of this team for Arena and everything else. So I don't think this two turns of defense up on the Black Order is relevant um, on the Black Order. But I do think it's relevant for Maw, if that makes sense. So I would, I would absolutely skip this uh, and move on to the next one. Everything else it does, it just goes from one turn of defense up to two. Really doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, Needle Storm, again, just damage, but it's a lot of damage because not only does it bring the attack up to a grand total of 80% piercing, uh, it adds a bonus attack um, to the fight. So that this one tier four technically is a 70% increase in 80% uh, increase in total damage. He doesn't do damage, but he does put uh, bleeds on on hero controllers. That's up to you. I never really found it necessary for it. Again, a lot of people like to just take a team. They did it with X-Men. They did it with, um, you know, Fury Shield. They did it with uh, every every time. Brotherhood. People like to tier 4 stuff to be like, look at the Yu-Gi-Oh! numbers I'm putting up. For those who don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh! numbers are numbers that are really big for the sake of being really big. They don't actually matter. Why is this guy's health 2,000 when it could be 2 or 20? That's what a Yu-Gi-Oh! number is. It's a, it's a fake large number to make you feel like you're better than you are. Um, that's what this is. This is to make sure you're Ebony Maw. You put these kind of tier 4s in Ebony Maw because uh, I don't like the fact that my Ebony Maw is only 98k. I need him to be 100k um, because otherwise my PP is too small. That's what I see. So like to me, this, this number doesn't matter. Ebony Maw is not 98k, he's not 50k, he's not 120k, he's the Ebony Maw I use when I do fights. And if he sucks, then I need to make him stronger. This number is not really indicative of how strong he is, it's just relatively indicative of how strong he is, so I don't really pay attention to it. Um, that's it for breakpoints. Now, bringing it all the way down to the end, ratings, this is an S team, I, I cannot stress enough. This is literally the best team in the game right now, bar none, uh, period. If you have a different opinion on this matter, because this is my opinion, I do not care. Uh, because I have whatever team you think is better than this, I have. Probably stronger than you. And it's still not as good as this team. And I don't even have this team at 500k. This is the best team in the game. Uh, it's not necessarily the best raid team in the game, but the fact that it can be used at all in raids is huge. It's not necessarily the best, um, you know, Dark Dimension team in the game, and that's totally reasonable. But the fact that it can be used in Dark Dimension is huge. You don't equate uh, the best by how good they are at one thing. You equate the best by how good they are 
at all things. And unless they're terrible in anything, they're not. So this team, absolutely phenomenal in pretty much all game modes. Uh, it can be worse than some other options in some game modes, but the fact that you can use them should tell you everything you need to know. This is one of those teams where you will never regret your investment in them. You know, they will carry you through whatever part of the game you think is the most important at the time. And even when they get beaten later, whenever the, the Black Order beating team comes out, whatever that is, the Eternals, um, then you don't have to worry about it. You know, once that team comes out, don't worry about it. This team will still have done all the work for you. And realistically, for the most people who are unlocking them up at this point and further before the Eternals come out, you'll be okay. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.